Hey guys, so another installment of State of the Agents just came out, and I wanted to go over some of the changes that Riot has in the works, along with a teaser for the new agent. As someone who mains controller, I'm very excited for a new one. It's been way too long. Without wasting any more time, let's jump into it and see what Riot has planned. Throughout the post, they have three devs talk about the different lenses they use to adjust agents and make changes. They also talk about the difference between game balance and balance perception, what happens when those two clash, and a deeper look into their thoughts on Chamber and Phoenix. This is followed by the new agent teaser, of course. So let's talk about the different lenses that Riot leverages when balancing Valorant. In the first paragraph, they say they've seen a bit of a shift in the initiator role ever since Fade came out. Their happy Fade is getting a lot of playtime, especially with how dominant Sova has been, but her ability to clear space is a little bit strong, so expect a potential nerf to her Prowlers. I would bet that they do something similar that they did with Breach and Sky when they had three flashes at once, and maybe just take one away. It's not a signature ability, so I don't think they would take a Prowler away and then give it a cooldown because it's not a signature ability. So in that case, they might keep one Prowler and just extend the duration or something like that. So they acknowledge Breach's strength on Fracture, and KO is getting more play and ranked as well. So here they acknowledge Breach's strength on Fracture, and KO is getting more play and ranked as well. Next, they hint at a second chamber nerf coming, since he is still stronger than other Sentinels like Cypher. Speaking of Cypher, there's a little nugget for him at the end of the post that we'll talk about in a couple minutes. Riot goes into what they want to focus on for the remainder of the post, how they decide when an agent needs a change, and monitor if they've hit the mark with the updates. They use multiple metrics or lenses to decide on whether to change an agent. First is win rate and pick rate data in solo queue. They first look at the agent's non-mirror win rate, meaning when an agent is picked and wins while the enemy didn't pick the same agent. Then they use agent pick rate in the same manner. This can tell them differences between an agent's strength based on the numbers and data and which agents the players chose to play. Next is player perception. They do look at social media, but they mostly use surveys sent to players all over the world to help them understand how people are feeling about certain agents. Following that is pro play. Here they see what pros deem as most valuable along with comps and utility usage. Last is their own design principles. Riot's team tries to fit these agents into their own design principles. They give an example of how clear an agent's strengths and weaknesses are compared to other agents. They use these lenses to develop a greater picture of what direction to take an agent. This does seem like a pretty healthy way to balance a game. There's a lot of game developers that use a lot of player feedback and data, and sometimes it can feel like they just miss the mark. Most of the time, I think Riot does a pretty decent job of balancing the game, but there have been some circumstances where they miss the mark with agents like Chamber and his initial nerf. Next topic goes over designing game balance versus balance perception. A second dev states that their job with Valorant is to provide a balanced experience that is fair for every player. I know some people are probably going to look at this and think, why are they catering to casuals or why not just listen to the pros? I think if you look back at the post we just read and see the way that Riot develops their thought process on changing agents, then you'll see that that's not really how they do things. The dev explains that the way in which players perceive the balance of the game is equally important to the The dev explains that the way in which players perceive the balance of the game is equally important to the numerical balance. They give their rationale for this philosophy saying they know the game isn't all about the spreadsheets and numbers, but how fun or boring the game is without ruining the experience. Balancing a game comes with a lot more nuance than a lot of players suspect, and it's not always about achieving a balance that is perfect, but rather one that feels fun and gives players a good experience. Next, they discuss balancing when the perception and data diverge. This means that the perceived changes don't always match reality. They show this table of agents and some fun facts about them. The dev wants us to look at the fun facts while also keeping in mind what the previous dev talked about. So for example, they have KO first and say that in regular ranked play, he is considered a weaker agent, but in pro play, he's essentially a must pick. Another is Brimstone, who is perceived to be weak, but in reality, he has one of the highest win rates in higher MMRs. This seems to be where the community can sometimes clash with the devs. They see one thing and we see another. So in this case, they have to figure out why this phenomenon occurs and how to navigate changing the agent. They mentioned Chamber being the opposite of KO, who is perceived to be weak, but in reality is strong. Chamber's stats aren't anything special, but players believe him to be overpowered. They plan on nerfing Chamber's power, which they hope will allow for a more diverse Sentinel pick rate. Finally, they dive deeper into Chamber and Phoenix. It seems they're looking into changing Chamber's teleport so that counterplay is a little easier for the enemy. Here, they hint at future changes for one of the OG Sentinels, Cypher. 
Like I said before, this is pretty exciting for me since I used to main Cypher early on in the game. And it's nice to see Riot acknowledging him for once. You know, instead of killing him off in every cinematic that comes out. Bastards. They go on to say that Phoenix is looking strong and his win rate has shot up. His flash is one of the strongest in the game now based on their metrics, but it's still early to say if it was an overbuff or not. Riot says they're looking into flash abilities across the board, specifically when it comes to initiator versus duelist flashes. So expect flashes to get more of a blanket tuning in the future. Overall, I think Riot has a pretty good idea of the direction they want to take Valorant, and they're always attempting to evolve as the meta shifts. I know a lot of people like the amount of flashes that they get hit with every single game, so who knows, maybe we will see a blanket nerf. Alright, for the moment you've all been waiting for, the new agent teaser. Now I want to first read you a few specific sentences in this last paragraph to show you how on the nose Riot is being here. Let's see if you can guess what they're trying to tell us. <clears throat> hey all, it's John Riot me 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 or whatever, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> John Gosicki back again. The designers let me swim in at the end here. Thank you, design crew. We have seen that controllers are in a bit of a drought. Aside from Viper, introducing controllers that can cover large open areas is a blue ocean of opportunity. We've let this soak long enough, and Agent 21 is almost ready to go out. I don't want to flood you with too much information in this blurb here, so I'll hold off on saying much more. Come on. And then we got a picture of water in the background. That's a water-based agent if I've ever seen one. So they also show an image of a notebook with a dish that's called, and I'm definitely going to butcher this, Shamos Shat. Sorry if that's awful. Based on this post here, it seems that it is a popular Indian street food. Along with the map in the notebook, the new agent is likely from India. Also, the text above the picture says, see you soon in Hindi. So my thoughts on the new agent is awesome. It's pretty sweet so far. I'm very curious what a water agent would look like in Valorant. Maybe we'll even see a new mechanic introduced like when Fade's Trails came out. So I had some random thoughts and ideas of what the new agent's abilities could possibly look like if they are water based. And I came up with a few ideas. Some of these might be a little bit too strong or too ridiculous, but let me know what you think. Since he's a controller, he should have some form of vision blocker, which could either be a normal orb looking smoke, but it maybe debuffs or reduces their audio since you're underwater. Another idea is a fountain that's similar to Viper's poison orb, and maybe they have two of them. So some of these ideas I actually got by looking up League of Legends water-based champions, I think they're called champions, right? And I found some interesting things that could potentially be tied into Valor in some way. So one is a Molly ability that creates a trail that enemy players see. So in the same vein as Fade, there could be some kind of Molly or like puddle ability that creates a trail that enemy players can see and makes enemy footsteps more audible. It could also neutralize other Mollies like Phoenix's Molly or Brimstone's Molly. So for this next ability, I looked up a champion known as Nami in League of Legends. She has this ability called Tidal Wave, and as you can see on the screen, essentially you would send out a wave across the ground in a direction ahead of the agent, which he can use as mobile cover for a few seconds. It could also have some kind of effect on the enemy agent that walks through it, maybe a slow or a concuss or something. So an idea I had for the ultimate ability would be something like a Tsunami. So he would basically throw a wall of water at people like Breach or Fade, and the ult disables abilities that pass through it like a trap wire or a turret, for example. So anything that's affected by the water that's coming through the bomb site or whatever it is, it'll disable those abilities. Because, you know, like water, technology doesn't really mix. <laughs> or another idea similar to Brimstone's ult, a big AoE that turns into a whirlpool. So essentially it would be like an astro gravity well, but giant. That might be a little bit too strong. <laughs> So this is the last idea I had, and it's similar to the champion Tom Kench from League of Legends. And it's basically this shield or bubble that goes around the entire body of the agent. This would maybe look similar to Reyna's heal orb. Maybe you don't overheal, but you take reduced body shot damage. Or even cooler, you use it when you're about to be hit with a debuff ability like KO's knife, and you negate the suppress ability completely. This could be some kind of protective orb that goes up for like 2 seconds and completely negates any abilities that are thrown at you. So these are just some of the random ideas I had for a water-based agent. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Any idea on what Agent 21's abilities could be? Leave a comment below and share with the class. I'm very excited for this new agent, and the last time we had a new controller was when Astro came out. That was about a year and a half ago. That's pretty wild. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.